Hello friends and welcome to a lecture on operation research. Today we will do a very interesting lecture that is we will go behind the idea of the simplex method. This presentation is going to be about how the simplex tableau was developed. What was the central idea behind developing the simplex tableau? If you go through this lecture and then you understand how to make the simplex table and how to solve the simplex table, your understanding about simplex table is going to be much more better and you will not find it as a trick or as a magic, but rather you will have firm and fundamental understanding about the simplex table and how it works. Why do we do certain operations on the simplex table? So without much delay, Let's get ahead. This is Professor Arvind Prasad. So all of you can click on the top link if you have come to this video to see how do we solve a simplex problem, uh, sorry, a linear programming problem using the graphical method. You can click on the link which is on the top right and you can see. Okay, but nevertheless, even if you are not aware of how do we solve it graphically, the solution for the simplex problem, the linear programming problem that we had was, that is, this is the linear programming problem we have. The objective function is z is equal to 3x1 plus 5x2. And the functional constraints of the problem are x1 less than or equal to 4, x2 less than or equal to 6, and 3x1 plus 2x2 less than or equal to 18. Now, solving this linear programming problem graphically gives you a solution of 2, 6. Now, how do we solve it using the simplex method? What do we do first of all? We introduce slack variables. So, for the convenience, I have written down the problem once again on the left side. The objective function is z and the constraints are given to you. Now, in the augmented form, what we do is we introduce slack variables. x3, x4 and x5 are slack variables. These are done in order to make the inequalities to equalities. So, we have to solve the problem. The augmented form of the problem is given to you and it is also on your right for reference. So, this augmented form that we have, we started by the most fundamental way that we can start or the most basic or logical way that we can start by solving the problem is by taking the decision variables x1 and x2 as 0. Now, usually the decision variables, the starting point or the initialization point is always, the, always starts with taking the decision variables as 0. This is a convenient point to start. So, we take x1 and x2 as 0. So, that is the initialization. What do we get now? Now, when we take x1 and x2 as 0, they are known as the non-basic variables. Now, using the augmented form, which is available on your right, you can calculate x3, x4 and x5. These are known as the basic variables. So, here we get the initial basic feasible solution which is nothing but x1, x2, x3, x4, x5 is 0, 0, 4, 6, 80. Now, we calculate z. z is equal to 0. Next, we have to find the optimal value of z. So, how do we proceed? We first analyze z. Now, it is very clear that if we move in the x1 direction, the increase in z is going to be 3 times. That is because it is z minus 3 1 x 1 minus 5 x 2. So, if we shift 3 x 1 and 5 x 2 towards the LHS, what do we find? For every unit increase in x 1, 3 increases or 3 point increases there. For every unit increase in x 2, a 5 point increases there. So, if we go horizontally, it is a 3 point increase in z. And if it's a vertical increase, there's a five point increase in Z. So 
we always go in the direction of the highest increase that is we go in the direction of x2. Now x1 and x2 are the non-basic variables. Now x2 has to be shifted in the horizontal direction so it is now going to have a value. So we call this the entering variable. Now this variable from 0 is now going to have a value. Now if we take x4 as 0 in the equation 2x2 plus x4 is equal to 12, we get the increase in x2 as 6. And if we take x5 as 0 in the equation x2 in 3x1 plus 2x2 plus x5 is equal to 90, as you can see here that only these two equations have x2 in them. So the increase in x2 is going to be 9. Now we take the least of the jumps in x2. So if we shift from 0, 0 to 0, 6, obviously at that point now x4 will be equal to 0. So x4 is now the leaving variable. So we have an entering variable. We start with initialization of x1 and x2 as 0. Then we increase the value of the decision variables or the non-basic variables that we have taken by forcing the other basic variable to become 0. Okay. And the basic variable which is made to 0 is so chosen that the increase is least amongst the set of the equations. So here we are now. We have x2 as 6 and x4 as 0. So we have now come to point 0, 06. Therefore, now the non-basic variables are x1 and x4. And of course, if you go back, we now write the calculation or the evaluation of other basic variables in terms of non-basic variables. So x3 is equal to 4 minus x1, x2 is equal to 6 minus x4 and x5 is equal to 6 minus 3 by 2 x1 plus x4 by 2. Now this is just a simple rearrangement. You can have a look at the augmented form in the right hand side and see that we have only rearranged. The rearrangement is such where on the LHS you have the basic variables and in the RHS you have the non-basic variables. So basic variables are written in term of non-basic variables. Therefore, it is it gets very easy to calculate what is the value of basic variables because the non-basic variable is now 0. So we get the value of x3, x4, uh, x2 and x5. So we have 0, 6 that is x1 and x2 and 4, 0, 6 that is x3 is 4, x4 is 0 and x5 is 6. Now we write also the objective function in terms of the basic variables, non-basic variables. Why is that done? So that it's easy to find the value of z because the non-basic variables have a value 0. What is the value of z we get from here? It is 30. Right? So we proceed further now and let's examine z. Now z is equal to minus 3x1 plus 5 by 2 x4. Now if we take minus 3x1 plus 5 by 2x4 on the RHS, we get z is equal to 30 plus 3x1 minus 5 by 2 x4. Now if we proceed in the direction of x1, we are going to get a 3 point increase in z. We anyway cannot proceed in the direction of x4. The reason is it would give a negative increase in x. We are interested in maximizing z. So now we proceed towards increasing z in the direction of x1. So we are now traveling horizontally. So the entering variable now is x1. Now as usual as it has been done in the previous slide we calculate the value of x1 by forcing the variable basic variable x3 is equal to 0. What do we get? x1 is 4. 
By forcing the other basic variable x y as 0, we get x 1 as 2. Mind you, the equations written on the left right here are the equations are the only equations that have x 1 in them. Now again here as done previously, we find the least of these two increases and force the basic variable x1 to 0. So the leaving variable now is x5, we take it as 0. So we have x1 as 2 and x5 as 0. The non-basic variables now are x4 and x5. So now we have come here to point 0.26. So we calculate the other basic variables that is x1, x2 and x3 in terms of non-basic variables. We write down the equation in that fashion. Once again, why it is done? It is done because it is easier to calculate that way. The non-basic variables are 0 and you directly get the answer. So now we have the basic feasible solution as 26200. 0, 0. The equation for z now is z is equal to 3 by 2 x4 plus x5 that is x4 and x5 are the non-basic variables. So this equation now is written in terms of non-basic variables and the value of z is 36. Now can the value of z be increased by any other shift? The answer is no because if we go in the direction of x4 that is the positive direction of x4 we will get a negative rise in z. Similarly, if we go in the direction of x5, we will get a negative rise in z. The problem is that of maximization of z, not minimization of z. So this is an equation which shows that now z has reached its maximum value and it no longer can be increased by shifting in the direction of the non-basic variables. So that was all about the idea of simplex method. I hope this lecture would have really whetted your appetite to study simplex W or the simplex table and solve all linear programming problems using the simplex table. If you listen to this lecture and follow it, your understanding about simplex table is going to be much more deeper and you will make lesser mistakes or no mistakes while solving the linear programming using simplex table. If you like this lecture, do like and subscribe my channel. And if you feel that this lecture is of some worth to your colleagues, do forward it to them. But yes, do ask them to subscribe my channel. That was all friends. Goodbye. Have a great day. Have a great time.